Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. I am your host, Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much for clicking by. This is a channel really designed at maximizing your enjoyment of the good stuff of wine. So please sit back and relax. If you are studying wine, you'll find these series very useful. This video specifically follows the WSET level three, so it's good for your studies. Otherwise, very useful information in here to help you enjoy wine more. One of life's greatest pleasures. If you have any comments or questions, by the way, uh, specifically about preserving wine, which this presentation is on, please do get in touch by commenting on this video below. We're in series two here, looking at how to serve wine. And this is, of course, methods of preserving wine. This will be the final free video in this series. Part six will only be available to those of you who study uh, the world of wine. You'll have to go across to subscribe at www.winewithjimmy.com or www.e slash learningwineportal.com. And that will give you all the information you need for subscribing. So a question we often get asked is how long uh, will wine last when it is opened? The quick return in terms of what I would say is that shouldn't be a problem. You should consume your wine. But of course, sometimes we only want a little bit and we drink in moderation. So how long could we keep the wine? So if a wine is not consumed as soon as it is opened, it will eventually lose its aromatic intensity in a matter of days. And after that, it could oxidize and then develop sort of volatility, sort of vinegary characteristics. The simplest way to extend a wine's life is to replace the closure and then store it in the fridge. So you have maybe got a screw cap, maybe you've got a cork, you replace those and you pop it back in the fridge where it will be under some protection. But it is only going to keep the wine for a couple of days longer. But it really does also depend on how much of the wine is consumed. So if a bottle is more empty than full, there will be more oxygen, more air that will be affecting that wine. So if you've only got, say, a third of the bottle left of wine, that's going to possibly uh, spoil quicker, okay? But conversely, if only you've had a glass out of that wine, a very small glass, it's going to keep better. Here's some general rules of thumb. This is by no means the uh, set in stone. There are variables, but sparkling wine said to last a couple of days. I've had some outliers that have lasted up towards a week, but generally one or two days because they lose their fizz. Light whites and rosés can actually last quite well because they're often quite delicate normally and they can sometimes last up to a week. Rich whites about three to five days, red wines about the same, ports and sherries much greater uh, because of their fortified aspect. Indeed, if it is fortified in sherry's case with their new laws. So it does, it really does vary. The best thing is to, when you first open it and taste it, remember what it's like, make some notes. And then when you come back to it in two days time, is it the same? Has it developed or has it lost its aroma? Sometimes wine will benefit from being open with some time aeration. Please refer back to my previous video on decanting or letting a wine breathe. So, what can we do to further enhance the life of a bottle of wine once it has been open? So we have something uh, like a group called vacuum systems. Now, these are systems where the oxygen is removed from the bottle and the bottle is sealed. Uh, now, the very sort of uh, standard approach is something called a vacuum van you'll see in this picture. Um, they still, all of these methods still tend to be unsuitable for sparkling wines. They will still, lo still lose their fizz, but there are many other systems. There are systems which um, are a bit more elaborate, but if you don't want to spend much money, then Vacuvan does a fairly consistent job. You just pump it out 
and then ram a often a plastic stopper you'll see down on the right hand side here in the bottle um, another way which is a much more modern way bringing in inert gas so this is what we call blanket systems these work on the principle of blanketing the wine with a gas that is importantly heavier than oxygen and that is because it will form a protective layer between the wine and the air when it is squirted in the bottle there are inexpensive devices that work along these principles you can get the likes of the first picture, which was private reserve, there's wine save in this picture, there are others available. And per gas canister, I'm not sure how much they are, to be honest, probably something like 15 or 20 pounds or so. And they last for, I don't know, quite a lot of squirts. So it will last you for a month or so. Uh, so that's fairly affordable for protecting your wine. Uh, you'll see other types as well. Uh, Coravan on the right hand side designed by a surgeon. It utilizes a very intricate needle which pierces the cork uh, and takes wine out and replaces it with argon gas. So the amount you always take out is um, replaced by argon gas. You do not take the cork out. Uh, and there are variations on Coravan now today with sparkling systems, screw cap systems as well. It's quite a wonderfully developed part of the wine industry. So Coravan, quite important, but of course, fairly expensive. Argon gas canisters are not cheap. So this is certainly for the more connoisseur of wine consumers, but a great gift for, of course, somebody who is into wine. Okay, so uh, next up, just want to finish on an old wives tale. And that is for sparkling wine. Uh, as you will see here, there is a spoon sitting inside a sparkling wine here, happens to be a Prosecco. They say that if you have opened a sparkling wine and you don't finish it and you want to try and keep the fizz, then putting a spoon in the bottle like this will keep the bubbles. Does it work? No, it doesn't. Uh, now, perhaps you have tried something like this at home before and you think you've had some results. Uh, the sparkle, in well, even when they're open, because it's saturated in the wine, can actually stay in that wine for quite some time. So it, it's not going to be anything to do with the spoon. Um, scientists, Some scientists have tried to argue, well, it's metal. And as it's placed in a fridge, um, that metal conducts that cold, uh, that coldness and creates an environment around that metal, which means that the gas can't escape, but the gas will. Uh, there is space for it to, uh, to escape. So this is an old wives tale, it doesn't work. The best thing you can do is to buy a sparkling or champagne wine stopper. Uh, they are today not expensive at all, uh, and generally are given away at a lot of free events, a lot of events you can go and get them. Uh, and you just pop them on. Very good for uh, picnics as well. Do look out for those. Um, well worth investing five, ten pounds in. Okay, that's it for part five. Please do join me for part six, which is going through examination questions on the previous five parts, plus also storage of wine. Now, this is following along the lines of WSET level three. I will work through those questions, but they're only available to those of you who subscribe to my e-learning portal, that's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Once again, any questions, please do get in touch by commenting below. But I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.